What is going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video is PS4 vs Xbox One. So I thought I'd make this video because it is only 8 days away from the Xbox One release and 1 day for the US. 15 days for the PS4, so let's get straight into it. So PS4 is at £349 and Xbox One is at £429. So price and release date. The Xbox One will be out 22nd of November, though from the 15th for US customers. And the PS4 arrives a week later on the 29th. The PS4 costs £349 and the Xbox One will retail at £429. With both of these packages included a single controller, the Xbox One's basic price includes the cost of the Kinect 2.0 whilst the PS4i does not come with the PS4. So let's talk about the designs. They're both black boxes, the PS4 is a bit slanty and the Xbox One looks like a videotape recorder, but they're both very much black boxes. Reviewers such as IGN and many other gaming companies have noted how surprisingly small and light the PS4 is compared to with the Xbox One. Games appearing on the Xbox One and PS4 will be made for both consoles simultaneously, meaning that it simply won't be efficient for developers to separate between the two in terms of hardware optimization. However, games developed only for the PS4 are likely to look nicer than those for the Xbox One. Neither console will require always on internet connection, though both will need one initial day for internet connection to update a patch, and used games will be free to play on both. Neither is backwards compatible with old titles, though the PS4 will stream these from the cloud and it's likely the Xbox One will introduce something similar in the future. Now we'll talk about the hardware and graphics. Both consoles have similar hardware, though the PS4 undoubtedly has the upper hand in terms of raw power. There's custom AMD chips in both and 8GB of RAM apiece, although the Xbox One is DDR3, whilst the PS4 is in much superior DDR5. But the difference comes from the GPU's graphic processing unit. On paper, the PS4's GPU is 50% more powerful than the Xbox One, meaning sharper looking games that run smoothly than Microsoft's console. The prediction has so far been born out of the side by side comparisons we've sent to consoles and you can see the video that is on the screen right now. The Xbox One is less powerful than the PS4 but the actual differences are minimal. PlayStation Plus absolutely blows Xbox Live out of the water where it counts. Games. Sony's instant game collection offers customers access to a number of free titles on the PS3, PS4 and the PS Vita including Metal Gear Rising, Uncharted 3, XCOM Enemy Unknown and Microsoft also offers freebies but the quality of the titles does not match up to the quality of the titles that Sony have offered. Subscriptions and online services. This has been a big difference in the previous generations with Microsoft forcing a yearly fee on gamers for playing online. This is after you've paid for the game, the console and your internet connection while Sony kept it classy and free. Subscriptions on both consoles will be necessary to access third party media content though these will require separate payments. This year however, both companies will be charging users for online services that you might have expected to be part of the ticket price. PlayStation Plus is now £5.49 per month, £11.99 for 3 months and £39.99 for 12 months. Xbox Live Gold is £5. Point ninety nine pound for a month, fourteen ninety nine for three months, and thirty nine ninety nine for twelve months. So if you're going for the best value packages, both subscriptions will cost three point three three pound a month. So now we'll talk about peripherals and controllers. The PS4 new DualShock 4 now comes with the concave triggers and rubbery thumbsticks, whilst the Xbox One's controller adds vibration in the triggers that. Mimic everything from gun recoils to heartbeats. Sony's does have the advantage of the light bar on the back of the controller, which will be used to identify players, but that functionality is matched thoroughly beaten by the powers of Connect 2.0, which can identify players when they walk in the room, log them in automatically, and detects their pulse. PS4 can also, I will also do automatic logins, but it doesn't come 
bundled with the console. The PS4's DualShock controller is slightly heavier and thicker than the previous versions. Lastly, we're going to talk about Kinect and PS4i. Kinect being Microsoft and PS4i being Sony's. Microsoft is certainly the winner, though there is the question of whether games want the feature it offers. I have a few feelings that they will, because the login feature is creepy but will prove useful, whilst HD Skype calls will certainly be worthwhile in the Xbox One. The Kinect 2.0 comes bundled with the Xbox One and might well provide the future of console. So that's it from me. Both of these consoles do look really good and I have to say I have pre-ordered the Xbox One. Now, if I'm not happy with the Xbox One, well, the reason why I've got the Xbox One, because if I'm not happy with it, I know I'll be able to sell the Xbox One and still have money for the PS4. Now, I'm not saying you have to try this, you can get both if you want, but... I don't have money, but yeah, both consoles are really good, I would take both, but I don't have enough money for that, but I am going for the Xbox One to start off with, and the games I'm getting with it is Die Rise and Call of Duty Ghost. Now, I'll be keeping you updated with more information from when the consoles are actually released, then we'll get the customers' real reviews on both consoles, and then I'll keep you updated on which is the best. Now, obviously, this will go on for a while because customers will be going up and down saying the Xbox One's better, but the PS4 is also better. But we'll have to find out and wait for more. But yes, yeah, been Casual Savage here. Subscribe for more news, gaming news, and other news and other videos. But yeah, please subscribe, rate, and peace.